What's going on guys? Jay Howe back at it again with another video. Uh, this one we're going to go over the Jade Witch Doctor set and if you follow the channel it should look fairly familiar uh, from a video we did pre 2.1. Uh, there's a few item changes with gear and as well as the legendary gems included. So we'll go over the skills uh, for those of you unfamiliar with it and then we'll go over the gear and a couple uh, tips that you can go over. And if you want to stick around, we're actually going to do some gameplay at the end, show you guys this in action, give you a couple tips and hints that you might want to try uh, to make this a little bit more effective for you. Uh, for, the, for the skills, we'll go over those real quick then we'll recap how all these tie together. Piranhas with Piranado. Haunt with Resentful Spirits, Soul Harvest with Siphon, Locust Swarm with Devouring Storm, Swarm, Spirit Walk with Jaunt, Horrify with Frightening Aspect, and for your passives, Grave Injustice, Pierce the Veil, Spirit Vessel, and Creeping Death. Now, we're going to go over, I'm going to break this up a little bit because there's a couple of very important, um, you know, tips to go over as far as how this is going to work. Um, this passive right here, Creeping Death, your Haunt Locust Swarm, and the damage amplification for Piranhas lasts almost forever. Now that is on a timer, it's not going to last forever, but it's going to be longer than the time that you're going to need it. Now, Piranhas were using this for crowd control, uh, and if you look there at the end, affected enemies will also take 15% increased damage. So you can apply that increased 15% damage on there, plus these strong arm bracers have the extra knockback damage there. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind, very important to do increased damage and some crowd control. We'll go over you know, some ways to make this work for you. Now the main attack that you're going to use is a damage over time spell, also referred to as a dot spell. Um, this is going to deal 4000% weapon damage is cold over 12 seconds. Um, with the resentful spirits this is actually going to make it cast to two different uh, enemies, which is extremely helpful when you're applying those dots and you're, you know, you're trying to clear a regular content as opposed to a Rift Guardian, stuff like that. Very important to have that skill there. Uh, Soul Harvest with Siphon, and this is your main one. If you look at the six-piece bonus of the Jade set, Soul Harvest consumes your damage over time effects on enemies, instantly dealing their remaining damage. Now, you're going to be applying Haunt and you're going to be applying Locust Swarm generally to elite mobs or depending on how high of a greater riff, possibly to those as well. For regular content, you'll probably just find yourself needing Haunt on the regular mobs, and for elites, you'll go with Logos Swarm. Now, the other item that's very important, we're going to go ahead and hit this real quick. We'll come back to it in a second. Uh, Logos Swarm and Haunt now deal their damage in half of the normal duration, so it's basically doubling the damage of your dot skills. And between Haunt and Logos Swarm, those are very important. Uh, so those are going to, you know, basically double it, and this is going to increase the time with Creeping Death as far as how long they, uh, the duration is. So that's just extrapolating the damage out over a longer period of time so that when you use the six-piece bonus with Soul Harvest, it's going to consume that very large, very, you know, high number dot skill that you have on there. And that's the way this build works. And again, we'll go over it with some gameplay here at the end. Um... Locust Swarm with Devouring Storm. This is going to be a cold rune because this is a cold build. Um, gain 25 mana a second while the first enemy hit by Locust Swarm cast is still affected by that swarm. It does come in handy, especially if you get your Soul Harvest back, you know, a little bit quicker when you've got cooldown reduction in the right spots. But it's mainly for that cold damage there, so keep that in mind. Uh, Spirit Walk with Jaunt. Um, you can go with Healing Journey. However, with Soul Harvest with Siphon, this actually, and we'll, we should have touched on this, you gain 32,000 roughly life for every harvested enemy. So it's very important to keep in mind that you are going to get some health back there. Uh, if you do find yourself having a little bit of trouble staying alive and you need that extra health and you need it every to come around a little bit quicker, you can go with Spirit Walk. However, when you're in Spirit Walk, you're not going to take any damage. Remember, you can walk through those walls of the Waller. But this is going to increase it to 3 seconds, so it's very important to have that in mind there. Uh, this will come around very quickly, and we'll go over a passive, and we'll actually we'll go over two passives that are going to make that come around very quickly. Lastly, and this is one you can go a couple different directions with, Horrify with Frightening Aspect. Now, it's on a 12 second cooldown, and it's going to horrify stuff, you know, causing them to tremor in fear and be immobilized for 3 seconds. So that's cool because it's crowd control. Now, Frightening Aspect. Gain 35% additional armor for 8 seconds after casting Horrify. Now, if you're an intelligence character, you're going to have high resistances by default because intelligence applies to your resistances. Where you want to, you know, spec your gear 
is going to be through armor as opposed to all resistances for your other classes. So generally your armor is going to be lacking behind a little bit. And one of the ways you can make that up is here. It's going to last for 8 seconds. Now Horrify is on a 12 second cooldown. However, it's going to be reduced with the Spirit Vessel uh, rune there. But it's also going to come around a little quicker. Again, we'll go over that here in a second. This is very important to keep in mind. If you want a wider radius, like with the ZDPS build we also have, you can certainly run with um, Face of Death. Um, but this is very important to boost your defense because you do leave yourself a little bit vulnerable with this build because you're going to have to get in and out of danger, uh, which is another reason why you have three seconds on this because you're going to run in and run out, and that three seconds is crucial to be able to time that. Another direction, if you don't have a furnace, which we'll, again, we'll go over the, the gear here in just one second. Let's say you have a sun keeper and an offhand, an Ukopian serpent is very a, a good way to go. Don't mind the roll on this. Uh, we're messing with something, but you'll see in the secondary, 30% of the damage you take is redirected to your zombie dogs. Now, if you don't like Horrify and you're worried about, you know, getting health back as opposed to your toughness here, um, which is pretty tremendous with 35%, you could easily go with zombie dogs with Leeching Beasts. These guys are great uh, to be able to heal you with this build. And if you've got the Ucompion Serpent, damage is also going to be redirected to them, so it's a good way to get life back and to mitigate some of the damage. For your passive skills, Grave Injustice is used on pretty much every Witch Doctor build, and rightfully so. Uh, reduce The main part is, reduce the cooldown of all your skills by one second when an enemy dies within 20 yards, increased, of course, by your gold pickup radius. Um, so it's very important to have your, all of your skills are pretty much on cooldown here, except for Haunt. Um, so all of your skills are going to come back quicker, minus the Haunt, which is very very crucial to this build everything's going to be on cooldown you want to be able to hit your piranhas apply that damage buff there uh crowd control more crowd control with horrify plus get your armor back again like i said you need that 35 percent additional armor very important your spirit walk to come around because again you're not going to be taking damage while you're in the spirit realm uh all everything all right pierce the veil all of your damage is increased by 20 percent, but your mana cost are increased by 30 percent. that's not bad because Locust Swarm is your main mana uh, spender, and you're only going to cast this you know, every so often. You're not going to spam this anywhere. You're going to be spamming Haunt more than likely. Um, so Locust Swarm, not that big of a deal uh, as far as the mana cost. Haunt, not that big of a deal with the mana cost because you will be getting your mana back. Um, Spirit Vessel. Now this is, I mean, this passive, I mean, it's impossible to pass up because every aspect of this passive is crucially important to the build. Reduce the cooldown of your Horrify, Spirit Walk, and Soul Harvest spells by two seconds. That's crucial. I mean, those are all your main skills that you're going to be using. So it's very important to keep that in mind. Also, this gives you a bonus life. And if you're doing greater rifts or if you're dying, this gives you a bonus life every 90 seconds. So if you take fatal damage, you go to the Spirit Realm, you can get the hell out of dodge. Uh, for two seconds, you heal back, and you basically have that bonus life. Very important. And Creeping Death, we covered at the beginning because it's so important to this build. Um, again, go back, look at that. Very important. That's the skills that you're going to run with. As far as the gear, we will cover this very quickly. If you have a furnace, this is incredible for when you're doing elite damage. Now, I had to roll intelligence on this because it was on a dexterity character. Uh, but this is in extremely important to the build that we're running. Um, Royal Ring of Grandeur, obviously, so you can run five pieces of jade and still hit that six-piece bonus, which is going to be your shoulders, gloves, chest, pants, and boots. All very important there. Um, if you have a Witching Hour, you might go that route for the extra crit damage. That's very important on a lot of builds. It's a tough find. Uh, Vigilante Belt does drop quite a bit. If you can get Int, Vit, uh, Armor, and a you know an 8% cooldown reduction would go a long way, and a nice secondary that goes a long way. I've been messing with this. Uh, you can go old school with a Hwarange wrap, the HWOJ wrap. Uh, that's going to uh, place a slow effect on the enemies that you're fighting. Uh, we'll run that from time to time. It is right there. Glad we could find that right away. Locust Swarm also slows enemies by 80%. You're not going to be using Locust Swarm all that often, but it does come in handy. It can roll anywhere between 60 and 80%. So depending on your play style, you might go that route. A little bit of cooldown reduction goes a long way with this build to be able to get your Soul Harvest back up. Um, Unity, if you're running solo, it's almost impossible not to run with this with pretty much every build. You put one on your follower and it splits the damage with you and your follower. So long as you have the uh, legendary, um, what's the word we're looking for, like the relic there, your follower cannot die. So you can take all the damage in the world. 
Again, the strong arm bracers for the knockback damage, very important. For your uh, amulet, it's good to have intelligence, crit hit chance, crit hit damage, and then a, a socket. You can go a couple directions if you want cold damage on there. I'm going to leave that up to you. This is just a nice, easy way to go. Uh, for our legendary gems, we have the Epicaceous Toxin Gem. Uh, all enemies you poison take 10% increased damage, so you're getting an extra 10% uh, damage there. You're getting the knockback damage if you're using piranhas, and you can knock them back. Um, you're getting all the different damage bonuses from all the different skills and gear that you're using. Very, very important to this build. And again, the other absolutely crucial piece outside of the Jade piece is the Quetzalcoatl Helm. Loga Swarm and Hot now deal their damage in half of the normal duration. We went over that. Throw a cooldown reduction gem in there and you're okay. Uh, for your gems, the Bane of the Trapped, you're also going to get the extra damage there. Um, a really good thing, if you have the third slot, you can easily go with something like... And of course, I don't have one in my stash, but the one that increases... Uh, there we go, Bane of the Powerful. I have some of these ranked up all across the board. You get the increased elite damage, plus you get the 20% increased damage, depending on... Uh, how high you have this level is how high or how how long it lasts. Um, so that's it, guys. That's the build uh, for your Paragon points. Max your movement speed in conjunction with your gear. The rest into intelligence. Cooldown reduction, vitally important. Crit hit damage, also really important. Then go crit hit chance. Your attack speed, even if you're running a two-hander, is not that necessary. Uh, it's nice to get enough haunts in there, but we'll go over that in the gameplay. Armor first, because you should have plenty of intelligence. Resist all, and then life regen, very important. Uh, if you find that your life is kind of low, you can go that direction. I've been finding this has been far more beneficial as I level up my Paragon points. Life on hit, resource cost reduction, area damage, why not? Put it all in there. I'm not even sure if you get the bonus of the area damage, but, you know, you can get the gold otherwise. Um, you're going to get a little bit of area damage in certain places. So, um, that's it, guys. Stick around. We're going to go over a couple tips for you. And uh, show exactly how you can make this work for you. And we're going to go, we're going to have a special fight with the Butcher. You're going to see me basically three shot, maybe four shot this guy, depending on our crits. It's really fun. Hopefully I'm not boasting and we can blast this guy down. Stick around for that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hop into Halls of Agony, level three. And I was going to start the video from there, but it seems like we have a special visitor. So we're going to apply Haunt. We're going to apply Locust Swarm. We're going to hit him up with our uh, piranhas and bam you saw a huge chunk of health come out there uh, we're gonna go ahead we're gonna horrify a couple things and there we go now a lot of times we can probably get a one shot there but uh, as you can see and this is one of the things about haunt is you can actually see with the proper gear in place with the cold damage um, I was getting ticks for 36 million on that guy without ever casting and here's another set of elites so it looks like they want to play and one of the changes that they did make as soon as we get some mana back here, is that they made it so that you actually run into place. There is a little bit of noobish play. Um, and we'll go ahead and we'll pop that. And just like that, we consume them with Soul Harvest, not after, uh, not until after they took us down. You saw Spirit Vessel get activated there. Uh, I was trying to show you guys something. One of the changes they made is Locust Swarm. You're not going to stand back here and cast it anymore. Is so long as you target somebody, it's going to run you all the way up to them. That was hands-free right there. Uh, so you've got an idea on just how that works. Um, it's a good thing to keep in mind when you're doing that, um, is that you don't have to run all the way to them. Now, Spirit Vessel is going to leave. Like, after it kills people, it's going to jump to different enemies. And you're actually going to see it. We'll go ahead and pop Horrify here because I don't want them touching me. Um, but we'll go ahead and pop uh, piranhas and I'm just letting haunt do the work and a lot of times you can actually just tag them and run um, it's not even that important to stick around you can maybe apply the piranhas buff so that you know they die a little bit quicker but you're seeing 17 and 18 million 19 million hits there now they did you know change damage over time skills so that they take you know an average basically of uh, your crit chance your crit damage all that stuff roll it all up into one so that it's not fluctuating so greatly hoping that you get this so it's a way that they change the dot skills and a good way is to stick and move if you've watched any bit of boxing you can do that uh, we'll run right through here I'm just showing you guys the effectiveness of haunt um, I don't want them hitting me so we saw the butcher was there so that's a couple of hints uh, we gave you guys I will try and find some elites on the way but I'm probably gonna break the video um, I take that back this is where the cursed chest is so we're gonna make our way to the butcher 
and uh, get you guys some uh, some video of uh, doing some damage there. So you get an idea. It's a good way to keep stuff around that you know is going to live a little bit longer, and you can see the effectiveness and the damage of uh, the applied uh, skills that we have here. So stick around, and I'll show you guys this really quick. All right, so we're here at the Butcher. We're going to apply our Haunt. We're going to apply our Locust Swarm. We're going to hit him up. And there, you saw basically a third of his life come out just from the haunt. There's about another, and again, it's going to depend on how hard that hits, uh, where it rolls up to, but again, we'll apply another haunt. We'll go up and apply Locust Swarm. Now, you can actually do this quicker. I'm just having a little bit of fun with it. That time, we didn't quite get the results we wanted. That hurts. I wish he'd stop. And he's dead just like that. That's all it takes. That is the Jade build. It's a it's a second staff I've gotten to that today. Uh, but that's it, guys. That's the Jade build. That's a, a really effective way to use it. Um, again, you apply your haunt, you apply your Locust Swarm, you go to town, and uh, you consume that dot with the Soul Harvest. So so long as you have all your gear in place, like I said, if you have a decent Sun Keeper, it's going to go a long way. Obviously, the Furnace really helped me out there. Uh, we were basically able to four shot that guy with uh, four soul harvest. Could have done a little bit quicker, but we were having a little bit of fun running around trying to explain that there. So hopefully that helped, guys. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below of the build. Obviously, we've done this before. It's a little bit different now with the, the gems and everything else. Uh, I didn't think these would be anything good, but I figured we'd identify them for the video. Um, if you don't have any comments below, feel free to let me know what you think by hitting that like button below. That's always appreciated. And if you're not subscribed yet, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We are definitely in line for a lot more videos and a lot more to come for a lot of things you might like. Pretty much all things Diablo related. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching. As always, guys, happy hunting. We'll see you next time.